What's up everybody? I know a lot of you are excited to see some of the crazy action between Limitless and Fedor Holtz. You know, Limitless has a background of being like a killer in boss, and of course so does Fedor Holtz, right? But Fedor Holtz is not necessarily, you know, known for his heads-up skill, although he did win a big heads-up tournament. Uh, Limitless is known for being willing to drink wine. So in this match, I think that was part of the stipulation that when they played, Victor had to drink himself some wine or whatever else he wanted. We're going to take a look at the top 10 hands from the first session, and I'll give you my two cents. I don't know if it's worth anything. You know, I'm coming out of a losing session myself, but hey, you know what I mean? Eh, it's worth, worth something. I don't know. Here we go. Let's take a look here. First hand, we got a raise to 500 with queen nine standard. Victor, three bets to 2,000. Again, pretty standard. 10x is pretty normal, two and a half to 10x. All right, not the best flop for queens, but he likes to bet 1,200. Again, pretty standard, about quarter pot. Now for Fedor, this is probably just a fold. I actually, you know what? His call of the three bet is a little loose. I forgot to mention that. Queen nine offsuit doesn't typically call too often uh, against a three bet of that size. But anyway, as you can see here, Fedor says, eat it. You know, I've got the nine of spades. I got nothing. And so I'm just going to raise small, which is a weird, kind of a weird play on this board. Victor, I mean, he's not going to fold here. He has to at least call. He has the queen of spades though, which maybe is a bad thing because it blocks like some hands like queen jack of spades. All right, there's the ace of spades. Now he has the, the nut flush draw. I would expect Victor to just check this ace. Oh no, he's going to bet really small. Interesting play here. Weird, like about 15% pot, 10% pot, something like that. You got to wonder what, what kind of a line is this from Victor? Like what is he leading here with? This is it's a little strange. So he makes the call, River's an ace. So Victor is gonna, I would imagine, is just happy to check and hope it goes check back and somehow has some showdown value against the, like a, maybe a seven or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like if you check and Fedor bombs this, you're gonna beat many hands. But the question is, would Fedor bet a king here on this river? Is, is it king, queen? You have a queen. I don't know. Pretty thin. So for 16K, over bets the pot and Victor folds immediately. So sick play there from Fedor. Wow, craziness. Like, first of all, the pre-flop call is a little bit loosey-goosey. The flop raise is a little goofy. It's a little outside the GTO norm to make that kind of a play. But then when he did it, you know, he went pedal to the metal and was able to get the winning hand to fold. He was drawn dead and somehow won the pot. Very nice. Okay, so we've got to defend here with a 6-7 offsuit and a check raise. This is a weird check raise with this hand. I mean, you are close to the bottom of your range, which is okay, I guess. But you have, like, no real back doors or blockers or really anything. And, of course, Fedor is sitting here with the with the goods, with the three jacks. All right, now the six, seven, he has the gutter ball. So if he check raises his flop, I, I would imagine following through on that card makes sense. Check raising this flop is a little too loosey goosey. All right, now he's gonna bet over bet. Okay, over bet. Now, so he's really just going for it, saying I have the jack. Fedor here, I think has an easy call. Although I guess you could make a case for Victor having 15K back and just saying YOLO, let's go. But I think the correct play is to flat here. And he makes the call. All right, now absolute air for Victor. He cannot win the pot. Um, I mean, at this point, it's like, all right. Well, you got to ask yourself, like, what is Fedor really calling turn with? Is he really calling with draws? Is he really calling with the three? Feels a lot like a jack. Having said that, you know, you certainly can't win if you check with the seven high. Question is, is this a good bluff spot? I don't think so. I think overall, it's probably not the best spot to bluff. And he does get called, obviously, with the three jacks and takes it down. So Lucy Goosey and another big win for Fedor. Okay, we got a three bet with ace jack, a di ace jack, call with six four diamonds, that all makes sense. And a check bet here with six four is great. You know, top pair, open and straight draw. Fedor really hates this flop. I mean, there's not a lot to it for him. He doesn't have anything back door, but boom, there you go. So that's a huge action card, okay? Because now you got Victor with a pair, a flush draw, an open and straight draw, and Fedor just hit essentially his best card with the jack. And a small bet, about third pot, from Victor. So I don't think he minds that much. He doesn't want to get check raised, which he does, but he's got a call now. And Fedor has to fade a hundred thousand outs. And the river comes to squeeze and it misses, of course, the GG poker squeeze for maximum torture. All right, we got a race with Queens, defend with six two suited. You gotta play hands when you play heads up. And now you're gonna go ahead and flop three deuces. Bad spot for Victor, who's got the overpair. Now Fedor has two choices, obviously. Fold is not one of them. He can call or he can go for a check raise. He should probably do a mix of both. And he does check raise. Pretty good size too. Check raising to 1300. You know, I think Victor's play is just always call. Now Victor doesn't love that card. When you get check raised, flush draws are a big part of that check raising range. He does not even have a spade. Um, I mean, Fedor has to feel still pretty strong about his hand, but he has to worry as well a little bit about spades. But he's definitely got a lot of flushes in his range when he check raises this flop and bets this turn. He bets one third. 
A raise. What a weird raise from Victor. I'm not sure I understand the purpose of this raise here. Unless it's just to, like, raise and sh shut down the river. Because now, you're looking at Fedor with a full house, and there's really not a lot of hands that Victor has an 8. You know, what is he going to just call the flop with, like, 8 and then hit an 8 and raise? Doesn't make any sense. So, Fedor has to feel like he has the absolute stone cold nuts. Unless he's up against, you know, what the hell? You know, he, this was a weird hand. So, he raised the turn, board paired, and he just like, all right, give it, you know, give it up. So, really weird play there from Victor. All right, we got a raised called here from Victor with 8-9. King 3 on the button for Fedor. Standard open, standard call. And uh, this is a spot where, wow, okay, so he's spending 70%. This is a good flop for the button, actually. Um, so, Vic, you know, so Fedor makes a good bet here on the flop. You know, check, check, turn. And now a bet on the river with nine high and a raise here. Wow, okay. So Fedor turning his king high into a, a bluff. He could obviously call with king high sometimes, but he does have a very good blocker hand with the king of diamonds. He's got a three that sort of blocks some straights and things like that. So yeah, he had the best hand anyway, but uh, very nice. Okay, so we got small here from Fedor and it's check raised by Victor here with the top pair. Fedor has absolutely nothing here. I mean, you, you could make a case for folding in this spot, but he does not. He's not. He doesn't want to be folding much. So now that's an interesting card. Victor still has top pair, open and straight draw. Fedor has turned a gut shot now after having absolutely nothing on the flop. Fedor is going to decide here if he wants to go rep something big. He did call this flop, so now he is repping it. He's betting two-thirds pot pretty close, something in that neighborhood. With absolute air balls, I can't imagine there's any world in which Victor folds this turn. So he obviously calls, and now this should be a check from Victor. And then you would imagine, as played, Fedor really has no choice but to bomb this river. It's a tough call, because you literally, with 10 jack, against the jam, you're, it's a bluff catcher, right? The question is, is 10 jack one of the good bluff catchers? Having a jack, hmm... Good for some reasons, bad for other reasons. I imagine the solver would say call at a mix. I don't know what that mix is, but call. Okay, so pot size bet. This is a slam dunk. You must call here with top pair and a jack. There's just no no way you can fold. No way. I mean, it's just if you are, you're overfolding, right? You just cannot fold for pot size bet. And he does make the call, and Fedor shows the absolute air ball. Okay. Hope you enjoyed the rundown there. There will be more action, I believe, on Monday. Or you guys are probably watching it right now because we're going to put this little video into the, uh, you know, video for you guys to watch. So I'm a fan. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did. I have certainly learned a lot about heads-up poker thanks to the spanking that I took in my match. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy the action. And I'll be back in the ring. I'll be back in the ring fighting somebody soon. Maybe even that Phil Hellmuth guy. I don't know. That would be so tough, huh? We shall see. Peace, y'all.